Well, my dear friends, I have to apologize for being silent for so long, but well, some things went a little wrong, but I hope that I'll be back for you now more soon. And today we're going to be talking about the STM32 ecosystem, because as you might have known, SGS Thompson has just bought Atolic. And given that I'm following the mobile and the desktop market and the mobile electronics market for a long time, I wanted to talk with you about what this means for developers. And yes, I have to apologize, I'll be talking a shit lot in this video. So if you prefer hardware, please click on, as long as you don't unsubscribe, I don't mind. But now let's dive in. Before we look at the actual text of the press release, we have to look at the advantages and disadvantages of SGS Thompson. What you see here, this is a discovery kit for their NFC platform. And I'm showing this not to show what I've got in my lab, but because there's a story to it. I have a friend at SGS and I met him at the SGS booth and I told him, Oi, Michael, I'm working on an NFC solution for Raper using a product from China. This and that reader. And he immediately offered me this. Even though he knew that I would not be using it, he still gave it to me just in case I wanted and I ever needed. And another thing, in my evaluations and tests, SGS Thompson consistently is the cheapest microcontroller. So their ecosystem covers an awful lot of bases and it also usually is quite price competitive. And to come to the other topic, about SGS, if we talk about SGS, this is a cup. And you know, when you go to a trade show, alcohol normally is very, very expensive. And at one of the trade shows where I was recently, SGS Thompson was the only company on the whole floor which actually gave out free alcohol to everybody, not to VIPs, not to customers. Shlomo, Homo and Omo could walk up and they could be like, oi, I'm Shlomo and they got a free gin and tonic. Omo could do the same thing, so could Tromo and they could even take the cup home. So in short, SGS Thompson is a very generous company. But now comes the problem. The problem is that their ecosystem is heavily, heavily fragmented and chaotic. Actually, sometimes people get these discovery kits and then they simply don't know what the fuck to do with them. And that is where Atolic Studio comes in. I mean, I'm not going to look over all of the press release, but the most interesting thing is this line, which is underlined here. And as you can see, it reads, will soon give STM32 developers a major competitive advantage with the availability of the STM32 True Studio IDE for free. And well, these last two words essentially put a bullet through the head of all other IDEs. Because on the long run, nobody wants to compete against the platform vendor. Microsoft made sure of that by kicking the ass of the other DOS companies, for example. They deeply ingrained in the industry that it is not possible to compete against the actual platform vendor. And another thing which might be interesting, we see here ST acquired them for 7 million. So now you know, in case you have a software company yourself, how much you can expect to get nowadays. Now we got through the press release. What does that mean for us? Well, first of all, if you currently use any STM32 IDE, which is not True Studio, then you should start playing with an evaluation version of True Studio. The reason for this is simple. Traditionally, a microcontroller IDE and the vendor have a tight relationship to one another. And I wouldn't be surprised if AC6 and the other products will get less and less support in the future just as True Studio was getting up to now, as you can see here in this comment from one of my Instagram followers, who I, by the way, greet friendlyly. So well, if you are working with an SGS product, 
you'll have to use a different IDE. Android developers had to do it recently and they survived it. But now we come to a more complex problem because True Studio isn't limited to the STM32 platforms. I have to apologize for the slightly shitty formatting, but this is what my facer gave me when I tried to print the page. And you see here that the list of currently supported microcontrollers practically reads like a fucking who is who of the industry. And you see here there's Atmel, there's basically everybody except for microchip. And well, these vendors are now going to start to think too. So I hate to be the bringer of uh, bad news, but if you use any of the other MCUs listed in the list, now is the time to start looking for a competitor's product. I'm not saying that you should switch over immediately, but I believe that now two things will happen. First of all, I don't even think that SGS will actually go after you, because SGS, after all, wants to make money selling Atolic. But what will now happen is the other microcontroller vendors, Freescale, everybody, they will from now on treat Atolic Studio like a hot potato. So if you call them, I would fully expect them to rebuff you and to give you the minimum amount of support which they need. So if your business is not STM32 centric, I would keep an ear to the ground and would try to listen what way your preferred microcontroller vendor wants to move. And then I would, as I always say, do as the Romans do and eventually follow the track. And well, with that, so it's a rather short clip. I've talked about what I think which will happen. And as you know, I am always looking for your comments and your opinions. So thank you.